Hello and welcome back to this rainy morning here in the field where I'm standing next to this oak tree here which just like many of the other nut trees around has produced a bumper crop this year so I'm just going to be collecting the last of these nuts to over winter to hopefully grow some nice little trees. So this year has been very different for the nut producing trees. There's been plenty of conkers, horse chestnuts, um, and sweet chestnuts. I don't think there's been as many squirrels this year around here. I definitely haven't seen as many as I did last year. There was loads last year. Um, but especially for the oak trees, because there hasn't been as many squirrels, and I believe it's what people call a mast year for oak trees. They've just produced so many acorns this year. Um, there's loads. This is the second harvest I've got. I pulled some off the tree, uh, all pretty much, this, mainly this tree actually, but some of the other ones. I pulled the green acorns off just in case I thought the squirrels might try and get some. Um, but they haven't this year. Uh, there's been that many that either the squirrels can't get enough of them or there's not been enough squirrels. I think this, that's, it's been a mixture of both. Um, so you can probably see that if I try and find one with a root, some of them have roots. Um, I don't tend to put overwinter the ones with roots as I feel that by the time spring comes, the roots will be too long and they're more likely to snap and I just feel like it's a waste of space. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna see this year, see how it goes. Um, green acorns, if you're picking them off about the end of summer, um, they've got to be decent sized ones and you've got to make sure you know, they're fully developed. You, they'll still grow if they're, they're green, they won't grow until spring. It's just a best idea to try and pick a few off before the squirrels get to them. I don't pick horse or sweet chestnuts early as I can't see inside the shells and they seem to develop a bit later. So there's no point trying to rip all them off the tree. Um, there's normally plenty of them, but this year there's been even more than anyone really needs. Um, oak trees t don't really tend to suffer from many types of diseases, um, but horse and sweet chestnut, you probably know they suffer from canker. Both of them do. Sweet chestnut has chestnut blight. It can cause some dieback, but it's not that much of an issue around here that I've seen. You've probably noticed on some of the conker trees in the UK that during the summer there's white patches on the leaves and the leaves tend to drop sooner as they die quicker and that's because there's some sort of maggot thing that goes inside it, some sort of larvae that eats all the inside of the leaf out but it will make your conkers typically smaller, the tree won't be as vigorous but it's towards the end of the year it really takes effect. Um, obviously it can't photosynthesize as much if not all of the leaf is green but it's still worth growing these. Uh, the threats of canker and everything, it, it's definitely worth growing them. Don't be put off by all these diseases. Um, I wouldn't try and grow ash trees to plant out and like, or mainly sell and say these will grow because of ash dieback. But it's definitely worth not, it's definitely worth trying to grow some of these um, if there's a diseased tree. Uh, as long as it's, you know, it won't be infecting many other trees definitely go for it. Even since yesterday I collected some, even more have fallen off the trees. It's hard to see them because the leaves, the leaves are falling now. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of acorns this year. Um, as you can see, like this one here, there's a root on it. It won't grow a green shoot until spring, but uh, that's just because the roots grow first and then the green sprouts come up as soon as it starts to get warm. So I tried to pick my acorns from different trees because I know every acorn is genetically different, I believe, but I just like to get a, a wide range. It's probably best shown here. There's this tree here that's still green and this one next to it, that has lost all its leaves. As you can see, it's two different trees, both English oak trees, but losing the leaves at the same time. And as you can see, there's some that are yellow there and then some that are green a little bit behind. So I understand not everyone will have all these trees to pick the nuts from, but you can just get some from a park or a street, like a street tree or something. Uh, don't like absolutely 
destroy it, taking every single nut. Try and pick from different ones if you can. See, I, I don't have any sweet chestnut trees here, so I just try and pick some off the floor every time I go past one every day. So eventually that will make quite a few trees as I collect three or four nuts every day. So to overwinter them, um, you can either just put them in a trench in the ground or in a pot of compost or sand like I'm using. I use sand because it's less likely to rot the acorns and it's just what I have as well. I do do a few in the ground but you've got to really protect them from squirrels as well so what, what we do is we put them in here they overwinter and then we pot them up into um, I put them into plastic like lemonade bottles with the tops cut off and a hole in the bottom people say that the roots will burn if they're exposed to the sun but when they're all packed together it doesn't really affect them especially when all the leaves have grown over them so in summer the roots won't really burn and it also means that the roots go deep this is just general builder's sand uh, it doesn't affect the nuts but i wouldn't put it into the soil to grow vegetables in as to be honest i really don't know what's in it so yeah i wouldn't put this into the ground because it could be like chemicals in it that could kill your plants kill your vegetables and that but it's fine for these nuts I've done it in here before and they seem to grow fine afterwards so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this pot up with sand with acorns mixed in it and then put it ready to overwinter so to start with you want to put quite a nice generous layer in the bottom of the pot I'm just going to put a few acorns in, just scattering a few like that, and then I just get a few more handfuls of sand. Like I said, you could do this with compost as well, like that. Then a few more acorns, if you spot any with any damage on them like holes, don't put them in. This one here has two roots coming out, so it'll be interesting to see how that grows. Just a little experiment to see if it'll make a significant difference. This sand could be reused for this same thing again next year or if you're making concrete you could probably use it as long as it's not full of acorns of course so make sure it's all covered up just the leaf and then just take that out i will also do the same with the sweet and horse chestnuts i'll mix them up together just to save on using sand um, but as you can see, the, there's a significant difference between the two knots in the appearance. I know what they look like when they come up and the difference, but if you don't really, if you think you'll forget, it's probably the best idea to put them in separate pots and label them. So if you're putting them directly in the ground, I tend to space them a bit, little bit more and just put them in trenches sort of thing. You've got to protect them from the squirrels. I'll just put some mesh caging sort of stuff over here. You can see a mole has decided to poke through though. Hopefully everything's all right underneath. As you can see, these are some leftovers from last year. The ones that aren't the best. Um, but they, they'll pick up. I like to grow them in pots though. Deep ones. Um, so they can get a good tap root still, but the ones in the ground, they're harder to dig up without damaging them, especially in clay ground. So you can see there's three in this pot. 
He and Nettles have decided to creep over everything, unfortunately, but I can try and rip them out. But here you can see two sweet chestnut trees. They're quite small, but they're doing all right. So if you've done them in a pot like I've shown you, what you want to do is find a place where you know it doesn't flood. Here is fine. Um, and put them in the ground. I just find that that's better thing, a better thing to do as they're less likely to freeze up but still go through that winter period. This is a bucket, it's not got holes in the bottom but it doesn't have to as long as it doesn't get soaking wet. So what I've done is put mesh cage with a brick, weighing that down and then to let air out but not to let rain in. Obviously I've put a board on top with a bit of sandstone on there like that so out of the way but I can easily lift that out in spring. Here it's a bit of a dump, I need to kind of clean it up really but this is one that was grown in the ground, planted in the ground from an acorn and then I've put it in a pot just to sell, it's just out of the way for now. But yeah, this is a nice one. It's got lots of stems. It's not a main upright one, so. Yeah, it's quite a nice little tree, that one is. So why go to all this effort into growing these trees, even if you don't have the space to grow them? Well, you can sell them and make a slight profit from them. And you can also give them away to people that do have the space to grow them. And it will have many benefits. The chestnuts have the flowers for bees, especially if you're a beekeeper, you might want a few chestnut trees around. Also sweet chestnuts you can eat if you roast them. Also I've heard that pigs can eat acorns, so if you've got pigs around you could have a oak tree. Obviously it would take a while to get plenty of acorns. This tree behind me, I say it's about 20 to 30 years old. Um, and it's produced lots of acorns this year, but not many before, so it's a long-term thing. Of course, you can get faster growing trees, but yeah, these are good for fence posts, especially the chestnuts. The wood is, as it's rot resistant, well, less rot resistant compared to other things. It also provides firewood, and if you've got a space that probably floods, it will also prevent the flooding as well. So if you don't have anyone to give these to, if you don't want to sell them, still you might as well grow them as you could probably plant them out, probably in some wasteland. But if you do, I encourage you to do it responsibly. Don't like plant massive trees that will like mess someone's ground up. You could also probably try and ask your local council if you could plant a tree in the park or give it to them. You could also donate it to tree planting groups. That's probably the best thing to do if you've got loads of them. Um, but if you go to start planting them out in just a wild area, make sure you're not good to be planting something that will ruin what's already there. And don't plant anything where it's just going to be in someone's way and don't plant it on private land. So it's been a while since I've done a video. I can't promise that I'll be doing them every single week, but I'm going to try and do as many as possible. I don't want to rush these videos. I want to do them properly, but obviously with school, it's harder to do these videos on a weekly basis, but I will try, still try and do as many as I can when I can. I really hope you found this video at least somewhat useful and let me know down in the comments if you're going to be growing trees and if so, what type and for what purpose. Please also leave a like on the video, that would be very much appreciated. And I hope I see you all in the next video.